time to unlock 17A. Here's your look at the new Hot Toys Avengers Infinity War Iron Spider 6 scale figure. Yes, we finally see the Iron Spider's debut in Avengers Infinity War. The product code for this 6 scale figure release is MMS482. I aim to give you guys an extensive look here at the Iron Spider and the first thing we're going to start with is take the Ultra Megatron and put it right to the very top of Spider-Man's head and stopping it right there. It doesn't seem like the figure is actually 12 inches in height, rather instead it's sitting at 11.5, 11.5 inches. We switch that over to centimeters because there's somebody, there's somebody in the back of the audience, in the back of the crowd yelling, what about centimeters, says the heckler. 29.2 to you, the heckler, sir. 29.2, about 30 centimeters in height. As I'm sure you guys will want to see a comparison, here is the Iron Spider that we're going to be looking at in this review. And here's the Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man. You would hope, and luckily the folks over at Hot Toys did make them the exact same height. That would be disappointing if that was not the case. It does seem like the figure shares the exact same body. Things like hands, for example, will also carry themselves over, though slightly molded in a different type of plastic. Height-wise, though, they do look the same. Although there is one thing that I do want to mention. Looking at the Hot Toys, the Homecoming Spider-Man, uh, obviously he does have double hinges in the knees. Now, the reason why I say that when I was looking at this figure and getting him out of the packaging, kind of just getting a good feel for the Iron Spider here, I don't know if he's actually got a double hinge in the knee. This is already one big problem I have with the figure. It seems to have an immediate stopping point. I don't think there is a secondary hinge there. There's one there. There's the bend happening. Well, it's actually a little bit higher right there. But I don't think this Spider-Man has a double hinge in the knee. I mean, it sort of feels like it wants to be a double hinge. And yet, I mean, just short of me forcing it, which is the last thing I certainly would want to do, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, of course, I don't think this figure actually has a double hinge in the knee, which is already one big problem with this figure versus its original release. I would certainly hope it was a verbatim carryover from one figure to the other, and I don't think... I would hope they certainly have put double hinges in both their knees. They certainly have for this instance. I hope that be also the case for this figure here as well. Moving forward from that perplexity, 
I'm sure that's a word. Let's have a look at the interchangeable head options that come included with the figure. Now, we've already kind of looked at this when we did the unboxing video that I posted actually not too long ago, a few days ago. The figure does come with two Spider-Man heads. Let's go ahead and just remove this head sculpt from the neck area of his torso and look at the two figures side by side. Now, it does look like they are similar. I can't help but feel like the one that has the light-up option might very well be a hair, uh, a hair lighter color. Very, very subtly lighter. It does seem like it could be just a little bit lighter than the one that has the interchangeable eyes. This one does have the light-up option. A very tricky feat, I have to admit, to get the button cell batteries in there. Luckily, good news, guys, bat batteries are included. To switch it on, you can get your finger in there, and you just switch it on. I did find I had some malfunctioning issues taking the plate off once again and kind of just pushing my finger into the battery area. It seems like the lights work well on the eyes, and then they seem to kind of just fade away on me. They st not quite stopped working, but seemed like they started fading the longer that I had it. I didn't really even have it on for a long period of time. You can sort of see the honeycombing effect as the light projects its way through. The little combing texturing, the little film that's inside there, and actually projects a pretty bright light. This one here, we will not unfortunately get that same thing accomplished because this one has the interchangeable eyes. I'll talk about that in a second. The head sculpts are good. Up close, you can see that they've actually even airbrushed the texturing there of his face, or of that little meshing that they, they put on Spider-Man's masked face. I feel like in the movie, though, looking back and checking out the source materials I usually like to do when it comes to looking at these Hot Toy figure reviews, so that I can get a little bit more extensive and uh, sort of know what I'm talking about. But it does seem like when I went back and watched the movie again, obviously the big problem is that the head sculpt, I feel like is, well, the biggest problem we'll talk about in a second, but I don't think he actually had the meshing right here. I don't think he had a line right here. It seemed like this was open. It certainly was a lot darker in color, probably closer to being a cranberry in color. So yeah, I almost see right there, it seems as if the eyes are getting a little bit lighter. Maybe my own eyes are playing tricks on me. The obvious big problem that I have with the figure, uh, let's go ahead and just switch these off for this. I don't want to be wasting the batteries in the meantime. Of the two head sculpts though, in all honesty, I kind of prefer this one first as my go-to. Not just solely because of the fact that the, the light up on the eyes, but I do also like the fact that with the interchangeable eyes, it seems like it's almost like a single surface. There's no depth to it. When you actually look at these eyes, get a load of these peepers, you can almost see because there is a film over top of it, a clear dome, and then you've got that white honeycombing texture underneath there, it gives a little bit of depth to it. It actually makes the eyes look like they're, they have some more depth to them versus these ones right here. Even though I may not necessarily ever want to change out the eyes, I just happen to do so on these ones, and I may not ever really have the lights going on a regular basis because that's not going to last very long at all. I think I might actually be inclined to just display it with this head sculpt because, again, I do like the fact that it does seem like there's, you know, there's just a little bit of depth. I keep wanting to go back to describing it as depth, but that's really the best way I could describe it. Again, real up close. Thank you for that camera. You can see again how they've airbrushed the texturing there on his head. Again, I feel like this part here, this line right here, and this line right here was omitted in the movie. I feel like that was just a smooth area here and didn't have the meshing. It's unfortunate, though, the big talking point that I want to mention about this, one of its biggest detractors is the fact that they opted to use a plastic head and then they used this vinyl over top of the Spider-Man's body. Unfortunately, though, the two don't work hand in hand. If we look again, I'm just going to put the head sculpt back on the Spider-Man, put him right here. If we once again look at the Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man, now this one did have a ball joint, but it sort of worked the exact same way. They put actual fabric and stretched it along the top, the main head of the six scale figure underneath there, the head that's underneath there. It certainly wasn't without its own problems, one of, its, one of which being the big noticeable seam that I had right at the top of the head, which is still something that bothers me. I wish the seam was 
I wish actually that they had half cut the seam and put the seam right at the back, fit it over the head and then sewn it to the back instead of, I can't imagine why the seam would have had to been this long and certainly having it not dead center makes it stand out even further. But again, we're not going to really talk about this Spider-Man because we've already extensively covered this Spider-Man. I think not in one, not in two, but in three different videos. The unboxing, uh, the look at the main figure, of course, in its main review. And then I also did a comparison between that and the NECA release, a quarter scale release, which of course is would be apples to oranges really when you come to collectibles. But a couple of people wanted to see the comparison between that and the quarter scale Spider-Man. So I was more than happy to oblige. By the way, by the way, check that out if you want to give it a gander at those three videos. But the the point though is the fact that there's obviously a more consistent pattern of literally a pattern of a fabric. You've got the pattern that goes all the way up to the top, and whether there's a ball joint or the head is attached via magnet, it's still much more successful by having fabric stretched across the head. At least it keeps it consistent for the rest of the body. Fast forward ahead to a year or so later, might have actually been a couple of years later when we got this guy as a release. It's unfortunate because why couldn't they have done the exact same thing? Vinyl stretching over the head, I can't imagine would have been that extensive. I mean, they've put obvious seam lines, which is a big problem I have also with the costume. But I mean, if the seam lines are there and that's obviously stretched over a plastic body, why couldn't they have also done the exact same thing for the head? It's unfortunate the reasoning why is because, well, if you put the head on top, you clearly can tell where the fabric stops and now a new plastic head starts. I mean, it almost looks like I took a head from a Marvel Legends quarter scale figure and I put it over top of a Hot Toys. I mean, it's very jarring. I'm surprised, very surprised actually, that for a Spider-Man figure, I mean, this isn't like a second tier or third tier. This isn't from the D-list. Spider-Man's an A-list character. You would think Hot Toys would have spent a little extra to put some care and detail into him by like stretching vinyl over top of the head sculpt as well. Okay, I've now beaten that, I'm sure, to a, a bloody pulp. But again, like that's a big problem. That is a real big problem for me. And one of the biggest problems I have with the figure, why could they not have just put the vinyl over top of the head? Or they could have made the entire body plastic, or they could have also made the body all metal. After all, this is a this is a nanoed body that's stretching over top of Peter's, not only his torso, but of course his head as well. Why couldn't they have also made this in diecast? Diecast certainly could have also allowed for all these kind of painted in little light up areas of a suit to actually be something that does light up. I mean, again, it just sort of feels like, I don't dare want to say they phoned in the figure, but I feel like they sort of took a lot of shortcuts a lot of shortcuts, some of which, of course, we're going to talk about at a later part of this review. I also want to talk about this head sculpt here. Uh, again, this is the head sculpt that's going to have the various interchangeable eyes. Um, it doesn't have, of course, the light up option down below. This is just magnetized. So when you are wanting to change out Spider-Man's head, you simply just attach it like so on the neck. It's easy. One of the problems I have always found with it is that the head's feel more like a bobblehead than they do something that is uh, not tactile, but it feels like you actually have resistance to it. I kind of like more ball joints myself, but nonetheless, that's what they opted to go with. I noticed that there's like this plastic film inside. I don't know if it's supposed to come out. It does sit awfully loose inside. It does rattle as well when you are moving the head. You can kind of feel like the plastic and hear that the plastic is crinkling as you're moving it. Again, I don't know if that's supposed to come out. I've just left it in there for the time being. But there are the two, two different head sculpts for Peter Parker. Now, speaking of Peter Parker, this is of course a big topic of debate when it comes to the Iron Spider here. The concerns by many, myself included, would be the fact that they've clearly reused the same head sculpt as the one that we got with the Hot Toys Homecoming Spider-Man. Case in point, there is the head sculpt right here that came included with that figure. And while this figure does sit on a ball joint, this one does not. It's basically the exact same head sculpt, other than for the fact that the one from Homecoming, which I wasn't really crazy about, looked off to the side. This one is looking straight forward. You can't even unfortunately mix and match these because of the socket area. This is also a more felt area. 
Um, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to use this head sculpt for the Homecoming figure and vice versa. The paint looks almost similar, although this one is much lighter. I suppose by that, by that argument, it's not similar. But the tones, I guess the tones are similar, but the overall coloring is just a just contrast. The contrast color is a little bit lighter. The paint is much better on this one, in all honesty, than this one here. The hair is also a little bit darker as well, which is actually somewhat ironic because in the Spider-Man, well, Iron Spider in Infinity War, he had very noticeably lighter hair almost a borderline reddish brown hair. And it certainly was a lot of a fuller hair piece as well versus this one right here. I wish that this is again talking about something that I'm sure I'll weigh in heavily over this review. It seems sort of like Hot Toys has just phoned this in. I mean, for a Spider-Man figure, you would think that they would have gone above and beyond, but I mean, the case is here clearly in the Peter Parker head sculpt. The hair should have been a lot fuller, it should have sort of draped off the edge, and it should have been a little longer in the back, uh, because uh, Tom Holland was of course filming a movie at the time, and his hair was just naturally a little bit longer as a result of it. But why they couldn't have used the... why could they not have used a different head sculpt instead of the one that they ultimately used? Now, here, this is something again I want to talk about, sort of, I don't want to keep consistently saying, phoning it in, but I just want to take the head sculpt off of this head this Spider-Man, and I just want to replace it with the Peter Parker head sculpt. It's a big problem as well that the neck is way too long. I don't seem to notice it as much when I replace it with a regular Spider-Man head. It seems like it's the proper length. And yet, unfortunately, when you do change it to Peter's head, the neck obviously seems much longer. I don't know if it's because they didn't put the socket far enough in. I mean, that hole probably could have been a little deeper if it was slightly just a little bit higher up. The head sculpt would have sat lower down on the neck. So it's really not so much the neck that's the problem. It likely is more so the socket in Peter's head. In his noodle, that unfortunately is causing the disconnect, so to speak. I mean, it just can't help but look a little bit longer. But I think a lot of it could probably be fixed if that socket was just a little bit more sunken in. One of the other problems as well with this particular figure is in the movie, because this is a nanotech, like nano generated suit, the way it leaves Peter's face, it's sort of just, I'm not a big fan of this in movies, but where you have stuff that just disappears to nothing, the nanos basically just escape off of his face and move down his neck. So when you look at the neck in the movie, it's actually a little bit more I don't want to say like 8-bit, but it's sort of pixelated where the the nanos have moved further down from his neck. There actually should be a skin tone right here, similar to his, of course, face. And the pixelized area right, sh right should be probably like right around here. Hot Toys, once again, has just filled it all in. And I guess that's asking a whole lot because if they had left that gap, if they had put like a little bit of a, the neck of Peter showing, of course, then that would wreak havoc when you wanted to, didn't mean to scare you there, when you wanted to change out to head sculpt this one right here. One last thing I'll talk about when it comes to the light up head, and we'll go ahead and just turn this on again. I told you this will be an extensively long review. One thing also in the movie as well, it seems like the eyes are more of a bluish tint. Here, though, as the eyes are lit up, they're lighting up a very sterile white. The eyes probably, I think, should have been a little bit more... I mean, you could probably go in there with, like, a glass paint and just put a film of blue over top. I certainly don't even want to entertain the idea of changing something to defaulted figure head sculpts. But I do feel like the, the, the eye area here should have been a little bit more blue, not so much white. I think we can all agree I spent too much time talking about his heads, but, but there will be one other thing that I'm going to talk about. It's one last thing, and then we'll be on our merry little way, at least to the rest of Peter's body. Let's talk about this head sculpt right here. Now, this has the interchangeable eyes. It does come with a series of different interchangeable eyes. He does not come with the red eyes, however, that came included with the other uh, Spider-Man head. But I'm sure if you wanted to swap that out... You could probably just use the exact same eyes. I don't think they're any bit different than the ones that we got from this Spider-Man Homecoming. 
Now these are just magnetly, magnetically attached to the uh, the head, little headpiece here. Let me just let you in on a little tip of the trade. I want to show you my little case here. We're not introducing new things that have come included with the figure, but this is just my own little investment. Uh, we open this up. It's just like a little toiletry kit. Of course, it's got like scissors. It's got tweezers. This is usually what I use for uh, changing out the batteries. They did include... Um, I never really do like them, though. They came included with the little tweezer, plastic tweezers uh, for this Spider-Man. But usually I always go to this one here because it's got a longer neck. I can get a little easier in there when I'm actually even changing out the batteries. I put the batteries in. I don't do it by hand because they never they never work. So I just kind of hold the batteries and I tuck them into the head socket. Um, I'm not going to show you guys right now, but... So I just basically take the batteries and I just put the batteries in. Then when they're in place, I just sort of push them down. It's a lot easier than just trying to manually feed them with your fingers. It never works. Um, but the other thing I wanted to show you as well is these little things. These are like little nail files, and I think these clean your cuticles and stuff like that. A very trusty thing that you want to invest in if you ever are collecting six-scale figures. The reason why I say that, if we look at Spider-Man's head sculpt here, uh, these are always a big pain in the butt to try to get to. Well, there is actually a, a, a little secret to the way that Hot Toys design these, and I don't think many reviewers have taken note of that, is you take your little nail file. I mean, it doesn't have to be a nail file, but I just like it because it's got a little hooked end to it, just like that. And both of the eyes, if you look at them, there is a, a gap space right here, right here. You just have to... You don't even have to press really hard, actually. You just take... I'm just using, again, the nail file. But you just push the corner. Just push the corner like that. And then once you push that in, it just kind of slides it right out, just like that. Uh, what it is is, though, you don't push it here. Pushing it here will actually cave in the eye socket. And you can also see there's a very strong magnet right there. But they deliberately put like a little gap right here. Just right here. There's enough of a space that, in theory, you could put your finger in there as well, but you could run the risk of pushing in. Uh, I've seen individuals do this. Push this in, and the whole eye thing caved through. Instead, actually, just take your nail file. And you can do this with many magnetized eyes. Just very carefully push it in. There's enough of a clearance, really. You see, it just about two-thirds of the eye is sunken in right there. Just push it in. You don't have to do much pressure at all. I mean, in fact, you watched me do it. Didn't take much Didn't take much effort at all. And then you just take the replacement eyes, pop those in. He has various different ones, but uh, I'm going to use, like, these ones. These were the defaulted eyes. This was, like, the next grade down. Slightly where the lens is closed a little bit more. And then, once again, we just take our nail file. It's easy, isn't it? And just just push the corner in. That's it. That's all that's involved. Hot Toys really should just venture into giving us something like this. Just a simple tool. I mean, it, I guess you could probably use a piece of plastic, but I like the, the durability of it being more metal. Just Once again, you push that through, take the replacement eyes, and then he's got the more squinted eyes. Couldn't be any bit easier, my friends. Uh, there's the interchangeable, the interchangeable eyes. Now, again, the problem with these is they don't light up um, you're sort of defaulted to just the eyes being the one color. Again, like the coloring should have reflected a little bit more of a bluish tint instead of the white that they ultimately went with. But much like the Spider-Man Homecoming figure, it does have these swappable eyes. I do like that they always include these. I don't see as if they're just thrown in. I mean, I mean, it logically makes sense that some people would want to probably change out the eyes. I mean, you could get real fun with it if you wanted to. Again, just take that file, take the little hook in there. There you go, pop that through. And, you know, you can replace one big eye, one small eye, and you can have a little bit more fun with it. So I always like that Hot Toys includes stuff like this. If uh, if anybody, by the way, was wondering where I picked these up, I think I picked this up, this setup from, uh, from Indigo Chapters here in Canada. It just so happens. I mean, I'm not advertising... Uh, you know, like a little nail kit, but uh, I like this one because it's got uh, kind of a faux leather snaps together, and uh, you can really find a lot of the tools to be very, very handy. The nail clips, of course, will be at, 
uh, cutting the fasteners for some of the larger, you know, the seven inch tall figures. Of course, you've got the tweezers, long necked tweezers or long stemmed tweezers really is the best way to go. Cuticle, things come in handy. But uh, I tell you again, this might be one of the best tools you could have in your uh, six scale collecting is the nail file, especially the nail file that's got the little hooked, uh, little hooked end to it. <laughs> Talking about nail clips. Anyways, the other thing that Peter does come included with, I always want to say, be compelled to say Peter because this is now an unmasked version of it. He does come with the same mask that he came included with, with the Hot Toys release. The Iron Spider, of course, now has uh, more of a slick, sorry, I threw that away very quickly, has a more slick material to it, a little shinier material than this one right here. Many people have asked, can you put this over top of Peter's head? You can't. Uh, it's not intended to do that. Again, there's the head sculpt right here. Even if you ripped the seam open, which again, I can't, I can't stress why would you want to, it wouldn't look as good as you think it might look over top of his head. Again, the instructions very, very clearly. Where's the instructions? Where are the instructions here? The instructions right here. It says, do not put the mask onto the head sculpt. Otherwise, the head sculpt may get damaged. Of course, like I said, it will involve you taking the seam apart to stretch it over top of Peter's head sculpt. Uh, one, other, one other big problem that a lot of collectors who noticed this figure in reviews also had mentioned as well. Peter shouldn't have a removable mask. The head, like I said, for Peter's mask should really just kind of uh, escape his head and then go back into the suit. He never really should have a removable mask. It's not even the same mask that he would take off while he's on that spinning wheel heading out into space. The mask he, of course, would have taken off would have been this one here because this would have been on his homecoming suit. So again, I don't know why Hot Toys felt the need to include this almost really the slap in the face is for them to have included a vinyl mask like this they could have used the exact same material literally the exact same material of crafting this mask and instead they could have make made something to actually go over top of the head sculpt again it just doesn't make any sense to me why they wouldn't have done that okay now we're done talking about the heads i promise i won't go back to it other than just again to say like the material Makes no sense why they would have used plastic and then vinyl. Okay, we're moving. We're moving on. Producers tell me to move on. Looking at his body, uh, once again, we've got the Spider-Man Iron Spider costume, which I'm liking a little bit more, honestly, but I still wish that it could have been the red costume, that it would have had the gold spider emblem and then the gold eyes, the one that we had in the comics. Uh, many people have said, I think this is supposed to be based on the infinite uh, Spider-Man infinite or infinite spider-man costume but i personally don't like this costume or i didn't like it as much before it's grown on me a little bit it does look good here in figure form but again it has real problems some of which many of which i've talked about when we did the unboxing of this guy um, primarily it's a good looking costume physically looking at it i mean from a design standpoint it looks good but it does have real problems when it comes to posing this guy. A little bit of paper or something on the on his shoulder here. Um, it does have some great panel lining and stuff to it. We're going to like discuss the positives first, and then we can talk about its many, many, again, shortcomings. Uh, there's the undersides of Spider-Man's feet. This is something I know I'm going to miss and not talk about, so I'm going to talk about this right now. The way that they've done this is... Okay, so you've got like the vinyl essentially the vinyl costume skin that's been put over top of a six scale body where they've decided then to put posability in the feet they've put it in the toe area but the problem is the toe is plastic very obviously the sole is also plastic but then what they've done is they've vinyl they put the costume over top of it this way and you can probably see where i'm going with this um, I f worry bending excessively the feet the way that I'm doing right now. I'm wondering if it's going to start developing a split. Because the fabric isn't, it doesn't look like it's draping all the way around his foot. Because it's only really on the top. I don't want to even dare like say like a slipper because a slipper would be the opposite to that. Because you're bending the foot back and forth. 
You see what may eventually happen? You may start seeing a split developing right there. I mean, I'm not going to probably continuingly to bend the foot with the intent of splitting the vinyl or whatever material they opted to go with here. But again, I just want to mention that to you guys. Be very careful. A lot of the figure here falls into that category of you got to be a little careful with it, which is once again unfortunate that you've got a figure that's 230 to 250 US dollars, which will then convert excessively in less in my favor, uh, converting that to Canadian funds. I think this guy ultimately, when it was all said and done, probably with shipping and everything else, probably cost me about $340. Ridiculous. Anyways, like I said, the body does look good. Um, I certainly wish this would have lit up. I would entertain, again, the idea that this guy could have been done in metal, but I don't know how many people would spend the little bit extra. For, for Iron Man, people seem to be okay spending extra for a die-cast Iron Man, which is all metal. I don't know if they would be as willing to jump on that for a Spider-Man because he's a smaller frame. Metal would have allowed all these little areas to light up, all of which that I talked about before on his belt, the sides of his torso, and in the shoulder area. Uh, one of the big, obviously, big problems as well is the these little plugs that are on his back. You will take these out when you are going to be replacing and putting in the mechanized uh, spider legs. I'll talk about that in a second. I mean, they stand out. There's no way around it. They do stand out. I can't think of what else they could have done other than if they had taken like circular plugs just enough to fit into the back area and then have those magnetized so you would just push them in and then have a tool that would be able to pull them back out this of course would run into the risk that if you tip the figure they could fall out i, I can't really again think of many other so suggestions solutions to that bigger problem uh, one of the obvious things as well is depending on the way that you plug these back in you will have some misalignment problems. Uh, you sort of have to kind of keep twisting them until the legs, until of course all the legs up and below uh, level off and line up to one another. Uh, a rule of thumb though is the speech bubbles. So, you know, they have like a little hook to them and then they're circular. I like to consider them as speech bubbles. Will always go to the bottom and the points will point inward. Uh, there's not as much of a rule of thumb when it comes to the pegs up on the top there. Those, again, are pretty straightforward. You're just going to line them up here. But uh, when you are replacing them back, just remember, speech bubbles and the points go in. Uh, you got some nice detailing there as well. I mean, I'm not ne I'm not critical necessarily of the job that they did in the costume. The costume does look good. Again, you're just having the real big problem when you are posing this figure that when you are bending stuff like legs and whatnot seam lines and uh, wrinkles will certainly develop. Now, they do say that if you level off the figure and straighten them out again, that those those little wrinkles, those little creases that we were talking about so much, will smooth themselves out. A little bit of also heat can help to smooth out some of those areas as well, but probably the bigger areas will be things like shoulders, things like elbows, all of those things bend, and the material sort of feels like what you would imagine Catwoman's costume to be in Batman Returns. Sort of feels like a like a vinyl raincoat is probably the best way I could describe it. That if you physically had one in front of you, that would be the type of material that they, they would have used for it. I mean, that's to downplay it. I can't imagine that this would have been like the same material as a raincoat, but that's again the closest comparison that I can make. I like that all the little the little grooves here, the blue grooves, are are textured. In other words, you can kind of feel that they sink further in. Even like running your finger across it, it sort of feels like you've got like patterned braille that you're moving your finger across. It does look, like I said, aesthetically, it looks really good, this figure. Again, it just has a lot of problems when it comes to moving the figure around. Joints and stuff, this would not necessarily be a figure that above straightly just displaying him in like a museum pose which would be kind of about like this i mean if you get too crazy with posing this guy like moving his arms for example and bending his elbows um, i probably wouldn't do this for a long period of time i wouldn't let this sit for months on end because you may notice a permanent and now having only done this review or probably like 20 minutes or so in and prior to that having just a look at this figure for like 
probably about five, six hours of moving this guy around, posing him, and moving joints around. I haven't noticed any permanent seams starting to develop, but if you look really close, there is one right there. Not too noticeable, but it's still there. It's right, you can see it. Hopefully you can see it, it's right there. The light hopefully hits it just right. Again, will that be a problem long term, years down the road, if we were to revisit this? Is this going to be something that's going to be an issue? All of which things that you have to really factor in. Once again, you got a seam line right there. Now, will that smooth out? I don't think it will. So that may ex that may continue to develop a stress, a stress line. You can see it. It's right there. Uh, one of the other problems as well is being that this is put on him in a vinyl, uh, the costume that is. Things like normal seam lines, which is something you would expect to find on a costume character anyways. I mean, if we look at the... I'm just going to reach off. Not expecting you to go back to this guy anytime soon, but if we look at the Spider-Man Homecoming figure, it sort of had the same seams. They're right there. I mean, they're a little more easier to hide because of the type of fabric that you're using. When you're using something like a faux leather, a vinyl, or a rubber, for example... Uh, things like seam lines, uh, I was I had a friend who was a seamstress, and they always said, like, these materials are hard to work with because it's very hard to hide a seam. The seams tend to bubble up, if you will, right around where it gets stitched. So right off the bat, as soon as you get this guy out of packaging, you notice that the seam lines are a little bit more obvious. In fact, I found on this side it looked a little bit harsher than it did on this side here. Okay, so we're going to look at Spider-Man's legs. I've just brought back my little nail kit here. It, it, I'm just going to use like this one. I think I probably could have even used the nail file, but um, I find it's one of the easiest tools to use. You can use the little smooth flat end. This is just a, like, again, for a cubicle. I believe it's for a cubicle. You're just going to get your tool underneath and just kind of just go like this. That's all you need to do. I mean, you could go in there with your fingers as well, but it's kind of hard to kind of get in there. Once again... Don't have to work hard, just work smart. Just wedge that underneath, lift it off, pop that off, and uh, just you're gonna do it with all four of them. I just dropped one, I'm gonna have to go back and retrieve that. But again, there's the very noticeable holes. You can't, I, you could leave them off and then just be able to put in the legs whenever you wanted to. From the front, you're obviously not gonna see it. It's only until you spin the figure around. Once again, they could have probably put like plugs in there and then utilize like a magnetized system where you just put it against it and pulled the plug out. You still probably would have very noticeable holes. I guess this is the smartest route that Hot Toys could have gone with going with it. Uh, but it's just ugly. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no real work around to that. So anyways, having a look at his legs, I'm going to have Peter facing the other way for this one. Uh, each of the legs are pretty similar to one another. They are all plastic, unfortunately. They're not metal. Kind of wish that they were metal, but uh, they are ratcheted joints. In fact, actually, a lot of Spider-Man is ratcheted. So there are, I guess, four knuckles. One, two, three, and four. Uh, they're done in gold with some nice blue there on the rigid areas there on the tops of his arms. And again, he has the little spikes, the little spiked points on the end. Uh, when you are putting them into his body, you're basically going to do the exact same thing we had talked about before. But one thing that aids you in this is the fact that on the back side here, can you see that? It says, you are. That would be upper right. If we look at this one here, for example, we've got dr, down right, and so on and so forth. The left would be up. This one here is up left. And then the other one would be down left. So when you are putting into place, that sort of kind of helps you. That's your guide. So down L, left side. Just pop that in like so. And just pop that into place. I mean, I guess you could line it up as best you can to one of the spider legs on his, uh, on his logo, on his, you know, symbol there. Now this one here, once again, is this one is upper left. So we're going to just plug that into the top. Take the other one. This one here is this one here is up right. It's going to plug into place. Sounds like my daughter trying to say stuff up, 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 please. 
so up please down R down R and then it goes right into place like so you don't have to really necessarily twist it as you're putting it in the plugs are strong enough you could just really push them in I didn't really wiggle them much when I was moving them they do naturally have their own posability in the sense that you can swivel these sometimes when you are swiveling them though they have a, a tendency of wanting to come out from the socket so you may want to just twist it and then just kind of push it back into place uh, but there are the spider legs it's a nice of course expansion to the existing figure it does make them a little top heavy as a result of it so if you do have your display stand and you do have the proper space to do it you probably would want to display the figure with the display stand and again if you want to just use the Peter Parker head just pop the head off oh, just pop the head off and just pop that back into place like so uh, again the figure looks good I mean design wise it does look good it does have like I said it retains all the same posability one two three and four you can move those independently you can bring them forward to the front of them if you want I kind of like bringing them having them further back kind of fanned out so to speak kind of as if he's got a, like a claw behind him I do like that look but one of the big problems again is you're gonna have a figure that's very very back heavy as a result of it so use your display stand if you have it that's after all why Hot Toys included it okay so we'll talk about the rest of Iron Spider's accessories this is by the way one of the tools that come included with this uh, it's sort of the lifting tool I always feel like I'm gonna break this when I'm trying to you know use this for batteries or uh, you know if I was trying to take the the tabs on the back of his torso off um, again this is fine that they include this it's it's a cheap current fix if you don't have a tool readily available with you like I said not advertising it but uh, just get yourself a good doesn't even really have to be a super expensive one just get yourself like a little nail kit okay <laughs> somebody would think I have stocks invested in this nail company so let's talk about some of the accessories uh, I guess the remainder of the accessories that come included with spider-man here it comes with a series of interchangeable hands um, currently I've kind of got I'm gonna go ahead and take all of these off and uh, hopefully the figures not gonna fall fall down on me uh, let's take all the hands off and then we'll just kind of go through each and every one of them and we'll talk about the different things that he comes included with so if he has uh, web crawling hands each of which also include the repulsor blasts I do like that uh, they are uh, a pretty good matching color but I mean they're still plastic kind of the same way as the head so you're gonna have that problem where obvious starting and stopping a fabric starting and stopping of plastic is very apparent when you look at these but that's okay I'm a little more bothered by the head in all honesty than okay I know I talked about the head too much uh, also include with spider-man of course he's gonna have to come included with these is some web shooting hands uh, not too bad I mean probably not display them likely I never really display any of my spider-men with the web shooting hands sort of want to go against the grain I just seem like that's such an obvious thing that I like to just display my figure with something like perhaps like gripping hands now he does have a couple of these little kind of grasping if you will hands I kind of like to think of them as more dynamic hands than anything else I mean it's not like really any of the accessories there's nothing really for him to hold except for the ill-fated ridiculous why do they have to include it mask when he doesn't take off a mask but I guess you could use one of the hands to display and hold that some of the other hands are uh, web holding hands uh, like for example we'll grab these ones here they are specifically designed for holding the web in place so I'll put those to the side for the time being and then again you've got a couple of just kind of extended out hands um, you know and then you've got yourself some close fists so not bad he does have an extensive amount of interchangeable hands some of which I probably will never ever display the figure with like close fists yawn and uh, web shooting hands I probably won't ever display him with he does also come with the interchangeable pegs so if you do break those pegs or sometimes if you're just lazy and you pull the peg out with the hand that's happened to me frequently enough usually I'll keep myself like a little um, 
little pair of pliers to the side of the backdrop here where I'll just kind of pull that off if uh, you know the hand comes out or you can like I said you've got the you've got a pair you got two of these that uh, you can get some mileage out of as well okay so then we'll look at his webbing but it has a series of interchangeable webbed options they're all made up of a translucent plastic translucent plastic let's not drop that one there there it is right there uh, he's got translucent plastic and uh, he's also got the web hanging hand or the web hanging web uh, that just attaches via the hole on the bottom here like that and uh, once you have the figure displayed you can just have them dangling down from the web same thing that we got with the spider-man homecoming nothing different there he does also have not one but two web shooters like this is the web that is shooting out hasn't clung on to anything just yet uh, just a couple of little web extensions uh, and then he also has just long straight versions of this which again can attach to the kind of looks like a funnel the web funnel here and again that just tabs into place be careful when you are putting this into place that you don't push it too much too quickly or you might develop a stress mark right here or you may eventually break that so he has that as well both of the webs uh, we'll just take these off for the time being. Probably a lot easier than holding the figure. Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man. I probably said Spider-Man a lot in this video. Uh, did have two versions of the web shooters. I don't know really why. One was closed, one was open. I mean, really, from the naked eye, from a distance, you wouldn't be able to see them anyways. But these ones just give you defaulted. These are his gauntlets. And there's defaulted two holes already already in the bottoms and uh, you would just attach the webs like that just like that <laughs> uh, by the way that also on this side fits fits in place as well so you can have one you can have two you can have none it's entirely up to you how you want to display it so both of the gauntlets these beautiful gold painted gauntlets have the means to shoot off the web and uh, then we'll slide these back into place. Let's go ahead and put the hands back into Spider-Man and we'll have a look at his articulation. I actually stopped myself. I was about to put the hand in place and then resume with the rest of this review, but there's one other thing I wanted to mention when putting the hand in place is uh, you gotta be careful of this piece right here. When you're putting the hand in, you got to be careful that the hand doesn't go over top of this and push down. I wouldn't necessarily say it's soft plastic. It does have some give to it, but uh, you would not definitely want to make sure that you pinch that area when putting the hand in place. So again, you just wiggle that on, tab that in place, being mindful, of course, not to, not to actually push down on this because that would certainly break, I think, over time. And uh, let's have a look at Spider-Man's posability. Normally, this would be the time where I would say, well, he does have a ball joint. Ball joint now is omitted because they've just put a magnet right there. So the magnets kind of gives you the same stuff that a normal ball joint would give you, would normally allot you. The head moves back and forth, up and down, and it can rotate all the way around. Well, we also look at the legs, which I know we've already kind of discussed, but it really is part of its posability. The legs all ratchet out, 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 and out. Get out. No, don't get out. So that moves around. All the same with all four of the legs. And uh, these also can rotate back and forth. Mileage may vary. As you are rotating this, like I said, these might pop out from their holes. Just pop those back into place. Uh, the upper torso does have a crunch. Does have a waist swivel. I'm trying my best not to be overly aggressive with this. I know there are individuals when it comes to posing their figures do get a little bit more courageous when displaying their figures, you know, in a more dynamic pose. I think when it ultimately comes down to it, when I move this guy into a dis detolf display, I'm probably going to display him not like this because this looks kind of silly, but I'll probably display it along these lines. Uh, you can move the arms back and forth. It seems as if this is a seamed piece of a, that additional material that's been sewn on top of the arm. 
it does bunch up in a way that I'm not too crazy about because really, I mean, when you are moving the figure, you sort of have to suspend some disbelief. These are all like little tiny nano, nano sized robots. They really shouldn't develop a wrinkle. But again, how would you work around that other than making this figure die cast metal? So you have to sort of suspend some of that when you are looking at things like his arms, for example. The arms move forward in a way that unfortunately just creases everything. Oh, that's just gross. Back and forth. The arms ratchet also out as well. I don't know if they're using the new joint system for all their future figures, but I kind of like that there is a ratcheted joint. It makes me feel like there is a joint still working behind the scenes underneath all of that fabric. Um, it is a little bit noisy, yes, but I would rather a noisier joint than something that is whisper quiet. And then I don't know what kind of damage I'm doing underneath all of that. Like I said, like the arm move forward and back out is a bend at the elbow, which seems to be a double hinge on the elbow. Uh, and then depending on whatever hand that you use, the hands rotate back and forth. Uh, once again, when you are rotating it, just be careful of that little point right there on the gauntlet. That's all you'd have to be worried worrisome about. Now, like I said, this rotates back and forth. The legs ratchet to about there. It seems very obviously, for me at least, when I move the legs out, there's a definite stopping point. There's a point where it says, like, you don't want to go any bit further than this. Now, the thing is, though, like, the legs move to about there, about a 45-degree angle, and they move out a little less than a 45-degree angle. The big problem I have, though, is it seems like, and the more and more I keep looking at this figure... Uh, I only feel like he's got a single hinge in the knee. This doesn't make any sense to me. Why Why would they limit posability on an, on an Iron Spider figure? I, like, Spider-Man should have, at the very least, a double hinge on the knee. The Spider-Man Homecoming had a double hinge on the knee. And yet, I can't get a double hinge working. I mean... I don't want to certainly force it because forcing jeopardizes whether if there is a double joint in there, it will loosen it up. Or if there's a single hinge joint in there, it runs the risk of potentially breaking that off. But it seems like there is only a single hinge in the knee. Has a upper, upper thigh swivel. Um, and then, of course, the feet rotate back and forth, up and down, ankle rocker. And we've already discussed, I'm sure, probably extensively to some people to probably thought, you don't have to talk too so long about the feet. But once again, he has toe articulation. They've split the undersole so that the feet do, or the, the toes do move back and forth. But again, I worry long term if that's going to start developing a split. And there, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure an extensively long review, but there is the new Hot Toys Avengers Infinity War Iron Spider. Behind the scenes, just before hitting that record button for final looks here, I mustered up the courage and I decided to put some extra force into Spider-Man's knee. More force than normally I was comfortable with. I was convinced that this figure did have a secondary hinge joint in the knee. There's no way Hot Toys would have only given Spider-Man a single hinge. That's ludicrous. So I applied extra force and then it happened. I heard a snap. Now, as you pick yourselves up from the floor, I'm sure you fall into hearing that, I do want to reassure you that there is a secondary hinge joint in Spider-Man's knee. It takes a whole lot of pressure and force by the person that owns the figure, probably to the point where you feel like you're going to break the knee. And that snap certainly didn't help much, but he does have a secondary hinge joint in the knee. Thank goodness for that. It does fix one problem of a many list of problems that I have with this figure. At least he does have a secondary hinge joint that you can pose the figure a little bit more dynamically than what you normally could with only a single hinge. Like I said, that doesn't fix the problem at hand. You still have a problem with the figure the way it was constructed. And of course, over this course of this very long review, sorry for that by the way, I covered off what I hoped was all the extensive problems that I had facing this figure. We can list some of these right now. The head sculpt, of course, is one of the biggest ones for me. I can, I can surrender to the idea that I can never really pose this guy in a dynamic pose because I worry that it's going to develop long-term creases in the fabric that they used for the figure. Okay, that's fine. My biggest issue really with this figure primarily 
sits very, very squarely on Spider-Man's neck. That is his head sculpt. Why they decided to give him a plastic head sculpt when the rest of his body is all wrapped in this vinyl material escapes me. I mean, we had Spider-Man Homecoming doing the exact same thing. Mind you, it did have a ball joint, but it was the exact same thing. They wrapped fabric over top of his plastic head. Why they couldn't have done this the same thing with this figure is something that I still don't know why. It's jarring. Looking at the figure, I feel like I'm taking two figures, a head from one figure, and I'm putting on top of a Hot Toys body. This is really ridiculous, the fact that Hot Toys would even consider this as a possible idea. And the fact that you can't even say, well, this is first for them. It isn't first for them. They've done this with many Spider-Man figures, wrapping the heads with whatever material the rest of the body is. So I don't know, again, why they wouldn't have done it for this head sculpt. And that also brings up another interesting point, something which I'm noticing more and more as I have the figure displayed. I don't know if there is a problem with the batteries, or I don't know if there's a malfunction with the light, light up options in his eyes, but you may not find this hard to believe, but I have his eyes going right now. The eyes start relatively bright and then they just diminish. They, they, they either run out of the power or they just shut off altogether. I have to take off the plate, kind of push the batteries back in, turn it off, turn it on, and the lights work again until I'm ready to shoot and start talking a little bit more in the review and the lights cut out again. So I don't know if this is a problem with the mechanics of the way the light up option was working in his eyes or if it's just a case that they've got bad, cheap batteries in there that really don't last very long. Getting this figure out of packaging, you would hope at the very least that he would have enough battery power to keep the eyes lit long enough until you eventually decide you want to go out to a store and pick up replacement batteries. They shouldn't die right off the bat. I mean, this figure has only been reviewed for what? 20, 25 minutes? And prior to that, I didn't have the eyes running for very long at all. The eye light up option should have lasted a lot more than what it did. Okay, so we've got a problem with the figure in the way that he can't stand or can't be posed without causing wrinkles to his fabric. He doesn't have light up options only, only in the place of his eyes. The rest of his body unfortunately gets completely omitted of that. So should the figure have been released in metal? I still think no. I know at the beginning of this review, I thought the figure should have been released die-cast, but I don't really think many people would venture into picking up a figure for Spider-Man in die-cast and paying about three and a half hundred dollars, about three fifty, uh, three hundred and fifty or so for this figure, which I don't think I personally would have done that. Three and a half hundred. <laughs> I certainly would not have paid three three hundred and fifty dollars for a die-cast Spider-Man no matter how good it was so of course that has to get sacrificed and instead we get the light-up options in his in his sh in his suit really more as just painted pieces than anything else the biggest problem with this figure is the fact that they reuse Peter Parker's head which is inexcusable I mean they really should have given us a brand new head sculpt the other heads are in plastic and I think that's ridiculous and unfortunately the type of material that they used Long term, I worry that this is either going to split or it's going to develop seam lines or wrinkles in his fabric. I'm sure even for the amount of time that I've got him posed right now in Final Looks, I probably have developed in the slightest amount already some seam lines or some wrinkle lines in the fabric. So I kind of wish that that wasn't the case. But again, really, what else would they have been able to do other than make this figure in all plastic or all metal? And I don't think either would have worked either. When it boils right down to it in final looks, an extensively long talking final looks, um, I do feel, feel like the figure is okay. Pick him up if you're a fan of Spider-Man, but for the fact that he is only in what we believe to be only Infinity War, and for the fact that Spider-Man Homecoming, he has a completely different costume yet again, I feel like the small window for having Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe films in this look, I don't think would dictate whether you would want to pick up this figure for yourself. Like I said, if you're a fan of Spider-Man, sure, pick him up because maybe you want to get every single six-scale release of Spider-Man that has ever been released by Hot Toys. Maybe you are the type of person that would want to pick this figure up. I'm happy that I did pick this guy up, but I do feel like he's got a lot of shortcomings. Shortcomings that, by now, this stretch of the game, Hot Toys really should have figured out their stuff. I feel like, if not anything else, they really took a figure that was already made, the head sculpt that was already sculpted for a previous released Spider-Man, and they sort of just repackaged him as Iron Spider. They really should have done a lot more than what they did. 
Either way, if you guys managed to pick up this figure for yourself, let me know down below what you guys think of him. Do you think he is sort of a phoned-in Spider-Man? I know that's what many collectors are sort of considering him as. He's sort of a phoned-in Spider-Man. Hot Toys, I think, personally, could have done a lot better of a job than what they did. But this is sort of what we have to work with until, of course, we get the Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, far from home, I should say, far from home, uh, six-scale figure release of that guy. Uh, in the meantime, though, today's a video, a very long video, but I apologize for that. Today we were having a look at the new Hot Toys. This was the Avengers Infinity War Iron Spider. And again, let me know down below what you guys think of this figure. Speaking of six-scale figure, you know there's a whole playlist on this channel just for Hot Toys. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of the other Hot Toys figure reviews that I've done on this channel, there's a whole playlist just for that. And make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way, guys. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.